Ooh, what? Hi, this is Bruce Rawls, and today I have the pleasure of in, uh, interviewing Stefan Bowles. Uh, did I say that correctly? Close enough? Very, very well. Very well. <laughs> and I recently learned about Stefan's work um, when several uh, course colleagues uh, said, oh, you got to check out uh, Stefan's YouTube videos. They're really good. And, and sure enough, They are. <laughs> so I, I've only watched a handful of them, um, certainly less than a dozen, uh, probably more than a half dozen They now. get worse. They And, get worse. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying them all very much. And I really appreciate the, you know, the depth of insights and uh, uh, the depth and breadth of what you what you cover. And uh, really nice compliment to uh, our mutual um, mentor, Ken Wapnick's wonderful work. And uh, so anyway, thank you for all those. And I'm looking forward to watching more of them. And I'll, I'll put the link to uh, Stefan's YouTube channel and uh, uh, his blog and Amazon books and so forth in the, the uh, write up when I do this. So anyway, welcome, Stefan. It's, it's a pleasure to talk with you. And uh, um, maybe you could just give us a little background about how you got into the course and, and anything that's pertinent to that and where else you'd like to go. How's that for open-ended? Well, I said, um, you know, we have time until tomorrow, right? Yeah. It's in a 16-hour Zoom call. Yeah. Maybe a little less, but... Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe 15 and a half. Okay. Okay. So where do I start? I think I can start with when I was in my early 20s. My 20s was, I was in a lot of pain. Emotional pain, not, not so much physical, but emotional pain. Mm -hmm. And... It came out, I was I was married, I had a son on the way, I was 22, and I was in the army in Germany in a four-year contract. And I drove home one day, in a Friday afternoon, I was sitting in traffic, and the question rose up, and the question was, is this all there is? You know, is this all there is? Um, I'm gonna be a father, which was great. and married and we had a good relationship with my wife's parents and everybody. So, but I had this nagging sense of something was missing and I couldn't quite grasp it. Um, and then one thing led to another, I, a friend of mine gave me a, no, I read, a friend of mine gave me a book by J, uh, Dr. James, Dr. Joseph Murphy, the, the Power of Your Subconscious. And I read it. That was in the uh, that was in the early early nineties. I read it, and you know, it was like the subconscious. You can program your subconscious about things, and then whatever. And one of them was, if you program your subconscious, you can wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. You will wake up exactly at seven o'clock. So I did that, and I was I woke up exactly at the time that I thought I would wake up, mm -hmm. and I was hooked. So I read everything you can possibly read. creative visualization um everything you you name it you know reiki bach flowers any, anything and everything i could find on the new age market and then i ordered a book that was called um the heart the heart of healing is the english title um love heals is the german title and in my uh, local library uh, the wrong book came Sorry, there was a different book I ordered, but this book came, The Heart of Healing came, and I wanted to send it back, and then I started reading in it, and there were quotes from the course in it. I think they it was written in the, a little bit after the course came out. I think it was written in the late 70s or early 80s, two psychologists, and I read the quote, um, you have no idea of the um you don't know how much your father loves you because the love in this world you can't you can't even grasp the the love that your father has for you in heaven mm -hmm. and i i was sobbing but i was sitting at the table sobbing and there were probably 10 quotes in the course and i just basically underlined all the quotes and i was trying to figure out what that book is because there was nothing in germany that we had no edition there was nothing right mm -hmm. and then i read jerry jampolsky um he was one that i read everything he wrote and then later on obviously marion williamson was one of them mm -hmm. and then i got the first 150 lessons um on the black market you know 
translated somewhere in Siberia, you know, moves <laughs> over here to Germany, whatever, with a courier, you know, stuff like that. Um, burned course, pages. Through you know, course like, mules, right? The, exactly. Yeah, secret exactly. of the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, it was a, it was a clandestine uh, operation for sure. So I read those and I got the English, I got the English original version of the course that I still have. And I try to translate the first 50 miracle principles into German. Mm -hmm. I had I had so little clue. I had negative clue of what it said. You know what I mean? I was like, mm -hmm. what even what even is this? I, I have no clue at all what this means, but I knew this was my path. Yeah. And that was very strange. I was lying on my bed, I had the course on my on my chest, and I, I knew I said, this is my path. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it says. And I was, that was, I was 26, I think. And then I gave away all my other books. You know, the, all the ones that I read, I, I gave them to friends. And I started translating. And then the next thing I got was Absence from Felicity, Ken's book. And I started translating that. That was a little easier, you know, because it was kind of Ken's talking about Helen and Bill and mm -hmm. stuff. And mm -hmm. In the meantime, sorry, let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That was a beautiful, <laughs> I mean, that's that's like second, you know, below the course is, is absence from Felicity. It's right there, yeah. you know, with how it all began. And in the meantime, I was sending cookies to the, to the publisher who was translating the course into German to, to tell the translators, hey, hurry up, buddy, you know, or <laughs> whatever translator, hurry up and get it, get it out. So I landed on their mailing list. And long story short, I got an invitation in the mail to go to Turkey on a on a seminar that Frankita Katani did. She was one of the translators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I went there and the rest, you know, basically then she introduced me to Ken and um, Ken and Gloria did a tour in Germany when the course came out in 94. And Frankita was one of the translators. So I was there um, in Frankfurt and just, you know, meeting Ken and Gloria. And we, we didn't really have a conversation or anything. It was just high. But I knew I wanted to go to the foundation, you know, in Roscoe. Mm -hmm. So I saved money and, and all that. And I went there in 96 for three months and spent time there. And then I met my now ex-wife. We moved to Woodstock, New York, and the rest. Now I'm here you know, 27 years later. Um, anyway, so that's the, the short version of it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of familiar names and, and connections there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, my, my mom had a huge metaphysical library, and among the many books in her library was uh, the three volumes of the course at the time. Oh. And uh, back in the the well late 70s into early 80s, and then I fi finally cracked them open mid 80s and and picked up Gary's. This is a very condensed version of my, you know, right, right, story. right, right. Uh, and then let's see. I guess it was um, 2004. I picked up uh, Disappearance of the Universe. And I said, I've got to get back into the course. <laughs> and, uh, right. So that had been which cool. <laughs> straight ahead. Yeah. So yeah, a lot, a lot of overlaps. And and I, I helped with the FIP website. So Franchito is a familiar name, having oh, uh, learned about wow. all the translators. Yeah. 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 So a few years back. Yeah. yeah, she spent, she said, so there was this one, one moment. Um, I was actually, we hit it off so much. She was 20 years older than me. She was, I adopted her as my spiritual mother yeah. or at least older sister. Um, but she, we hit it off in Turkey and I must have had a natural, very basic understanding of the material. Not as, as now, but for back then it was, I, I, I kind of knew roughly what it said, at least for the beginning stages of the process. Mm -hmm. And she invited me to do some workshops with her. So I did, I went, we went to Switzerland. Um, we visited Marisa. No, just kidding. That was, <laughs> that was later. Um, but I went to Zurich actually in a couple of workshops and then in Germany and um, with her. And we were one night, we were, I, I think it was in a hotel room or something. We were listening to Ken's, one of Ken's tapes, and it was the very early, the beginning. I know, I remember the meaning of judgment, 
uh, either the meaning of no the the lesson um i want the peace of god it was one single tape usually he has two three four ten twenty four thousand you know tapes in one in mm -hmm. one package mm -hmm. but it was one single tape and we listened to it and we both looked at each other and we it something clicked and i'm so happy now that that happened so early on in the process because Ken said basically and the the course says it in that lesson to say these words is nothing but to mean these words is everything right so the whole i think this saved us literally 20 30 years with the course because we realized at the same time that the course is not about love. It's not about the positive. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. only about the obstacle. Yep. Right. Yep, yep. And when we were starting to do the workshops, the very normal thing is to talk about the oneness and the love and the, you know, the unity and all this stuff, because it's so, such a beautiful thing in the course. Right. And, but we realized, and, and Frankita said, oh my God, I have to go back through the whole translation now and look at it with this, mm -hmm. with, I, with this in mind, mm -hmm. right? That it's not about the positive, that it's about the, ops, the, the block, the whole thing. And so that was a very profound moment. And I think hmm. did, since did, then- did she, did she change the translation as a result of that? It was, she went back to Ken and they definitely had discussions about it. And I'm uh -huh. not sure what, what the specifics were that oh, they okay. changed. Okay. Um, I don't believe it was much. Oh, okay. Okay. But it was more about in her own mind, everything about the course all of a sudden was 180 degrees different, yep. Yep. right? Yep. Upside down. Yeah. And that became in a way my mantra that that was the one realization that the course is not about the positive, that it's about the negative. And that's and when mm -hmm. Ken always says that mm -hmm. and said that, I always said, you know what, this is, this is the, the core of the core of the core of the course. That's it. You know, the, the deserted Island sentence, you know, this is not about love. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that was one of those moments back way back when that was, uh, very specific and put me, I feel like for myself, for my own process on the right track, because I always, I use Jesus as a dumping ground for my pain. <laughs> you know, I said, uh, please take this from me, you sure, know, sure, yeah. help me with this, with this girl, with my pain, with that pain and stuff. I was in a lot of pain. And for the most part, nothing really Nothing really happened, you know. You want him to it be wasn't... your your dream repair technician, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And with this though, it be it switched because then I had to say, okay, so if I don't have peace, it must be because I don't want it, and that flipped the relationship with him completely because then I could start very slowly i mean this went on for years over years to realize to say to him if i'm if i'm in any kind of upset or pain or discomfort it is i i want it i want this please help me with it mm -hmm. right that was so that was the switch from please take this from me to if i if i have it i must be holding on to it please look at that wish to hold on to it I'm phrasing it in something that I didn't quite wasn't wasn't able to phrase 15 years ago. Yeah. You know, but it was kind of like in that direction. You, you said it very well. And I, a couple of metaphors come to mind. And, and one was was uh, if you're trying to get off the ground on an airplane and and fellow pilots who have flown before uh, are coaching you um, and they probably shouldn't spend too much time rhapsodizing about how wonderful it is to fly at altitude and, and being above the clouds and all those kind of you know, lofty ideas until um, you learn how to untie the, the chains that are tying the wings down and unchalk the right, wheels. Right. Right? If you, right. Until you get to, to that, and that's kind of where we're all at with the course. And the, right. the, other, the other analogy that comes to mind is, is um, if, you, if you're on a team, um, in order to, to really make progress, you have to identify the, the saboteur on the team. And and we just have the one person team. So there's there's the right. Right. <laughs>
that uh, yeah that's a good one yeah anyway but yeah I, 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 I bet I, it's, I was that's there's a that's such an important point though is it's it's a not no course it's not a yes course and I love how right. Ken Wapnick emphasizes right. that yeah right. that, that, yeah that's, that's so crucial that's isn't it huge yeah right. yeah I had this vision um in my head not a vision just like a, a thought when um when you're in a dark cave which would be the ego thought system right and mm -hmm. you have the lamp you have the lamp in your hand which is the beautiful language of the course mm -hmm. and you just look at the lamp you will die in that cave yeah you will literally not get out alive because you're just so mesmerized by the by the beautiful light of the lamp you have to turn it around and illuminate the path in front of you to get out of the cave. Yep. So that makes, that brings the course into a different light, you yeah. know, pun intended, obviously. Yeah. Um, so that, that the, the light is there to illuminate the darkness, not for itself, yeah. you know, so you don't, you're not mesmerized by it and say, Oh my God, this is such beautiful language and we're all one and it's unity and blah, blah, blah. And you, you glance over uh, what is not love is murder. Because you're looking into the light of the course, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's I, that's that's my that's my personal metaphor with the light in the the it's cave. Re resonates so well for that. In fact, a few years ago, I was thinking, you know, the course really is quite challenging, and and just just for the fun of it, I, I put together a calendar of twelve of the most challenging quotes in the course, including "What's not love is murder," and made a bl recovering bliss in any calendar is what I called oh, it. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so but, yeah i actually came up we came up with a, with a word i was talking to marisa i think it's called listening buster oh there we go there we go yeah it's like the blame thrower yeah yeah different <laughs> different bullets exactly exactly <laughs> yeah it's funny but then on the other hand you know i feel i feel very i feel a lot of compassion for the path because just to pick up this book, even though you don't know what it is, I and you f you feel some connection to it, and part of us must feel that this is gonna get rough, mm -hmm. you know. But we, I feel like we want to push that moment when Jesus says, "Okay, you want? Are you ready to go into the cave and look at the darkness?" We want to push that moment out because we. You know, part of us, as the Course says, you don't want peace. You don't want to go into that cave and look at the fear of God, you know, our, our belief in sin and guilt and what is not love is murder within us. So we want to push it out, but it's all, we're, we're defending against, I was just reading this um, this morning, we're defending, as you know, against something that we know so well. It says, um, if you would look upon love, which is the world's reality, how could you do better than to recognize in every defense against it, the underlying appeal for it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So however, wherever we are with the course, we are actively searching for that love that we believe we've lost. So mm -hmm. however we express it, some express it in, as Krim says, socially acceptable ways or course group course <laughs> society acceptable ways others uh -huh. don't but we're on the we're all on the path yeah you know what what more do you want come on yeah yeah as you're saying that i was thinking another another aspect of it is in order to and the course brings this out and i think in more than one place is in order for you to deny something you must have first known it right and i think that's that what you just uh mention really speaks to that doesn't it is because i mean that no matter yeah. where where we're at in in our you know plowing through the obstacles with holy spirit's help um in that process um you know that's that inexorable um you know light illumination <laughs> peace um you know we're drawn to that uh and right. I, I actually kind of ties in today's workbook less you know happy outcome to all things is sure, you know, because it it's really happy inevitability. It, ultimately, we will all be motivated to want to, you know, go th through and beyond the obstacles we've made in our mind. I I actually watched a little bit of of uh, I think it was one of your videos from about a year ago, just before we got on about purpose, and I was you know, you made some great points on that in just the first few oh, minutes the, that I watched. Um, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Oh, the uh, uh, this 
the what's it called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. I, I got that title from Star Trek. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, the Final Frontier. The fi- yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Right. Well, that was an interesting experience, really, because when I was in in Roscoe in the foundation, I was there for three months and it was my home for three months, you know, and I had so many experiences there, good and bad, that this place was kind of special. <laughs> right. It was it was special. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when I came back, to, I went back to um to Germany to kind of dissolve everything. And then I came back in January of 1998, uh, of 97, and we moved to Woodstock. We wanted to be close to Roscoe. And then they moved, you know, in 2000, they moved to uh, to Mecula. Mm-hmm. And I think they wanted to give that, that place, which was an incredible, beautiful, it was a motel. It was a massive hotel where Ken had his lectures and dining room, big dining rooms and rooms mm. on a lake. You had a paddle paddle boats and bacha court. It was incredible. Tennis court. Huh. Huh. It was amazing. And they kept it so well. Hmm. So when I, and now uh, my partner and I, two years ago, well, when, when I wrote this, uh, just before I wrote this, we, I said, you know, I want to go back and check it out. So we went back and... It was abandoned. Mm. The weeds came through the pavement. I was going, I was leaning to at the door to the big um, hotel building where we had the lectures and you could smell the mold through mm. the door. Mm. And my room, when I was in this little motel building, it was, I mean, it was literally abandoned and it was starting to, to deteriorate really fast. And I realized nothing survives its purpose. Mm-hmm. You kind know of that. In, in lesson 182 about, you know, our childhood home, you know, is now a distorted at best memory kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that for 10 years, it was this healing center where every, everybody in the world came to be there and learn about the course. And that purpose had been fulfilled and nothing survives the purpose. It's mm-hmm. now, it, why would it still, I mean, obviously somebody could have taken it over, mm-hmm. But I was a little sad for maybe two minutes. And then I realized, whoa, this is actually what else would it's done, mm-hmm. you know? The I was even thinking about my the content, gravestone. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's totally, totally different now. Yeah. I was thinking uh, nothing survives its purpose would be should be on my gravestone. I I, it's, <laughs> I think that's my, because uh, the body, you know, the course, mm-hmm. nothing survives it. It's just jettison what's no longer needed right just like right. the same same way a booster stage on a rocket falls back to earth and, right for yeah. must has to yeah yeah sometimes i think about um practicing forgiveness is sort of like reaching escape velocity for the mind speaking of rocket metaphors <laughs> yeah right yeah i feel i i feel practicing forgiveness is you're in not quite quicksand, but your your head is barely above water. That's my uh, <laughs> that's my view of forgiveness because it's it's the you know it happens at looking at the ego, you know, at the darkness of the ego. So you're in the mud, in the midst of it. You're not. Mm-hmm. It's not a happy place. You know, it's a it's a very challenging place to be in that moment when you look at the ego and say, oh, oh, whoa, this is what I'm doing, you know, mm-hmm. or this is what I'm thinking, and then grab Jesus's hand. And sometimes you feel a little bit lighter and other times you don't, you know, you just keep keep going, keep doing it, keep doing it. Like wh- who said that when you're, when you find yourself in hell, keep going. I don't know who said some president, Roosevelt yeah. or something. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, somehow that reminds me of the uh, another silly saying is when you find that you're up to your ass in alligators, it's important to remember that your original objective was to drain the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good. I, that's not original, but I just remember that from somewhere. No, that's that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I, I like the quicksand metaphor too. I, in fact, that that came uh, came up. Oh, I don't know, a week or three ago. And and it occurred to me that you know, like the ego always tries to uh, put 
uh, ladders in places that aren't going to work. And so it's, it's foundation really is quicksand. So, I mean, you can start climbing the egos right. ladder out of quicksand, right. but it, it, every step you take, you're just, right. <laughs> it doesn't really get Continuous. you anywhere. Yes. Yeah, Continuous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, the idle, uh, uh, word that's used in the course so much. right that's a yeah. good that's a good metaphor yeah I like whereas that. the holy spirit's so like got a real rope ladder hanging from his helicopter and um you know say hey psh, grab on and uh we'll get you right. out of here and, and then you can climb up the real ladder you know yeah actually what i would say yeah is you just the metaphor what the course you know when you go and look at the ego would be you're on this ladder and you you realize it's quicksand and you let go of the ladder and you go into the quicksand and then you grab Jesus's hand and you go through it, through it, through it to the bottom. And then from there, it gets less and less. And all of a sudden you walk out on the other side. So that would be my, my interpretation of the coursework would be to, you know, look, go, go into it, mm -hmm. look in, look to the, at the ego, like yeah. the deepest, darkest, you know, you have no air. Yep. And that's yeah. But but we're safe, we're safe even if even if we we exactly get a little panicky. Uh but right. but, but yeah, right. there's perfect safety there. Right. Yeah. Right. I actually had somebody um comment on one of my videos and it, it was really the perfect description of my, my own process. He said something like, um, it's almost, it, to, to sum it up, I will never be able to overcome the separation, or I feel like I will never be able to overcome the separation and the ego is too big and the judgment is just too all encompassing. And I know that I know that state very well. That uh, I think that sometimes it is impossible to get out. And I realized over time, no, whatever the words are, nothing, nothing works on that because that you're in, you're in it, right? You you see the judgment all around you, and you're like, there's no way out, and. The only real thing that helps at that moment for me was to, or is to take Jesus's hand and just stay with that sense of doom mm -hmm. with Jesus mm -hmm. and not try to get out or not try to change it or not to not try to feel better or anything like that. Just stay in it, stay with the pain as whatever that person said, Yogananda or something, uh, stay with the pain, Take Jesus by the hand and stop there. Don't try anything. Don't, don't try to get out. You know, don't try to escape the pain. Mm -hmm. Just stay there with Jesus. And that's for me the core of looking. Mm -hmm. To stay in that in that moment. Maybe not for like hours and hours, like mm -hmm. five minutes, right? Or whatever, however long. Stay with it. Sometimes just a few that, seconds will do it. It seems like a few seconds. Yeah, right. yeah. But just being being willing to suspend the need to to be out of that yeah. situation. I I think the quick it kind of fits that quicksand metaphor really nicely now that I think of it. Because if you thrash around in quicksand, it's just going to get worse, you know. Whereas if you just right, it's okay. Just like like I, you, like you did, yeah, yeah, with your AI, you know, just like <laughs> just floating on the ocean, you know. Yeah, we we need uh, alternate in, intelligence uh, <laughs> to, to, instead instead of the one that we made up, right? Yeah. Right, right. I've actually I've actually uh, in a previous course conversation, uh, I, I we were talking about the happy dream, and I I looked on the facing page, and this is one of my favorite quotes, and that says, uh, "It is very hard for you to realize it is not personally insulting that your contributions in the Holy Spirit right. are extre so ext extremely disproportionate. You are still convinced that your understanding is a powerful contribution to the truth and makes it what it is. And and I think that the kicking back and floating is sort of like, okay, my interpretations, my contributions haven't got me out of this ego right. quicksand. Right. I, I need some help. And just the pausing, and I and I want to commend you on on your videos. Um, um, a lot of times, 
I have a tendency to just kind of ramble on, but I like the way you take appropriate pauses and kind of let, you know, the ideas kind of sink in and percolate a little bit. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I was just thinking about something that Ken um, said in one of in many of his workshops. One particular, he said, don't work on it. Yeah. And, you know, that seems so counterintuitive to anything he he says all the other 10,000 minutes that he has a workshop. And then one minute he says, don't work on it. Like, and um, and I think I want to do a segment about it because it's it seems so contradictory. But that's the thing with the quicksand, you know, don't work on it. It's if you're in the midst of the ego, mm -hmm. if you're in a full-blown ego attack, there's, there you cannot get out. There is nothing to do. You can try anything you want, you know. But it, the the best thing is to stop. Like you know, like a goat, the goat runs and all of a sudden it falls over. Like, right? It's like totally stiff. So if you do that in quicksand, you don't you stop, right? You stop going down. It's like if you stop thrashing, you're kind of still, and you're kind of suspended. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's a good example, but I feel like that don't don't work on it yeah. just look at it the, the working implies a lack and a deficiency right. which is the, the ego's only perspective on anything right that i, I right. separation happened i pulled this off i've right. i've i've committed this impossible crime so therefore now i'm guilty so the only thing i can do as an ego is to work on it you know? right but really, it's just it's just fighting against the lobster trap. Another, I, I love analogies <laughs> as well as pilots. But another one comes to mind as you're as you're saying that. I was thinking about years ago. I was getting a pilot's license, which I really didn't do much with after I got the license. But it was fun to just. You kept your headphones though. Uh, no, these are different. These are different. Oh, <laughs> way way different. But but uh, I remember my instructor was saying, "Okay, now we're going to um, go out into this area of central." California, where I was living at the time, and practice departure stalls. I said, "Okay, sure. Like, yeah, okay. I, you know, I kind of study up a little bit." And, and he said, "Well, make sure you apply lots of right rudder. You're more more right rudder than you think." And sure enough, I didn't apply enough right rudder. And and when you stall, you know, the wing will go off to one side. Right. And, yeah. 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 And you quickly discover you're falling not quite vertically, but you're you know. And then, and then he said, and, and he took over the, he says, let me, before we did this, he said, let, let me take over the, the yoke if, if, you know, if you feel like you need that help and, and oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> so immediately he did. And, and then he did something that's kind of like you were talking about, you know, sinking down in and letting Holy Spirit guide you through it. He says, now we're going to push the nose down. It's like, what? You know, we're already right. going almost straight down. Right. Now we're, we're going to go more down and he said yes because you get need to get airflow back over the wings and then gradually apply power right. and until you can pull it out and then otherwise you go into a flat spin and there's no recovering from that so <laughs> after that's three, very four, good after three or four revolutions now that's now for, fortunately in the courses analogy there's no number of spins that because we we've, we've been spinning for lifetimes probably right but, but uh right. so there's no there's no real danger you know no no real identities have been harmed in the making of this movie right but uh, right but right. Uh, anyway but yeah i hadn't thought of it that way but it's kind of like you have to go the contrary to your intuition or ego's intuition right. anyway right <laughs> yeah. right you want to get away from it yeah yeah you know I think that's the that is the the num one of the number one defenses of the ego is to create a problem and then try to get away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than going into the problem, mm -hmm. you know, looking at the problem. Like for example, if you would have just a worldly issue with money, let's just say, right? Um, we tend to try to somehow distract ourselves from it or get away from it or 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 feel bad about it or feel like a victim you know in, in with that versus to look at every, look at it really closely you know look at all the numbers look at everything that you spend look at everything that you're that comes in look at how you feel about it you know is there anxiety connected to it is there shame connected to it just look at the whole thing and not do anything for like a week or so just look at the problem, you know, and then let Jesus tell you, tell you what the actual 
problem is, you know, or, or whatever, however you can solve it with your personal guru, you know. Yeah. Um, but that that's the that would be the um the solution. But we don't we don't even come to that point. You know, we're running, we say, oh, I'm I'm gonna, you know, get something else. I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna try to avoid going back to look at it because only I think if we look at it we can go through it and realize the problem is separation, you know, the, or the problem is the belief in sin, mm -hmm. guilt, fear, projected outward, money problems, blah, something like that. Right. So, and then not to do anything about it just for a little while, let it, let it sit, you know, sit in that juicy, like muddy, smelly, very uncomfortable place, mm -hmm. you know, but sit there with Jesus next to you. I think that's the that moment is that what what the course says that moment can be terrible, you know when you you get to the bottom of it literally, yeah. you know. You, you see the ego and all of its gory detail and right. just you right. know starkly vivid, uh, yeah, hide hideousness. Right. But it's it's a, right. a dream of hideousness. Right. I think I think that's what Holy Spirit wants us to see. Yeah, it's it's almost like you know that fairy tale um, with the the Sleeping Beauty when the prince wants to save her and he has to go through the thorns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you look at the thorns, the the thorns would be the ego. And if you look at the thorns from a distance, they look airtight, right? They are like a ring around the castle. And if you are even fifty feet away from it, you can still see nothing just thorns and the moment you touch them you realize whoa there's like plenty of paths it's very open so you just basically can go through it mm -hmm. but if you keep your distance you don't see that it's nothing right 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 so that's that's for me is the the, the, the biggest proof of forgiveness you only look you know, you only have to look because if you really look, you realize it's it's a cloud, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Right. It starts to vaporize. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Seems like light years thick granite, steel reinforced, exactly concrete, whatever you know, and you know, yeah. impenetrable mountain fortress kind of thing. But no, nope, right. it's it's all no. E even physics tells us it's mostly empty space. You know, exactly. I remember my high school uh, physics teacher saying, you know, that if you take a ab an atom and make the the uh, nucleus the size of a, a soccer ball, the the nearest electron is four miles away. That, that's a lot of empty right. space. Hello. <laughs> Whole lot of nothing going on. Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And you, you, you I think you remind me of, uh, was it lesson 79 and 80? You know, let me recognize yeah. my problem so it can be solved. And then the next page, let me recognize my problems have been solved. Well, it's I have to, solved. but, but I ha we have to look at it first. We have to, right. you know, spend whatever time is necessary with Holy Spirit to, to say, okay, I'm not seeing this, you know, my way out of this by myself. Right. Yeah. Right. And the other thing is that the problem, there's this one thing that I was thinking about um, called guilt shadow. I think it's in the, uh, in one of the pamphlets, psycho psychotherapy, I think guilt shadow. So the problem would be, the shadow of the guilt in the mind. Hmm. So it's really not, you know, let me let me recognize the problem, which is the belief in sin, you know, that that right. deep, extensive belief that we killed God. That's the that's always the problem for anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I realized the last two years when I did the YouTube channel and kind of prepared for the sessions that the separation isn't really the problem. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, you know, because the separation itself is nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so there's, there's the thought of separation, and then the Holy Spirit says, there's no separation. And then the Son of God would say, yeah, you're right. There, there, there can't be any separate. It's, it's nothing, right? And then the sin comes into play, and the sin is this, like, thousand-pound bag 
that all of a sudden sits on the shoulder and is like, <laughs> you know, and then to get under out of that and to say separation is nothing, <laughs> right? You can't do it. It's like the sin yeah, is yeah. is what what really mm. makes it. That's why the 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 it's the the citadel. You know, the ego citadel mm -hmm. is the belief in sin. That yeah. is yeah. its bread and butter. Without that. It's like eh, there's no real step. separation is nothing, right? I, I love that metaphor, and I, I'm I'm going to add to it the citadel with the moat with the thorns and the, the all the, uh, the guard dogs and the lasers and the right. tanks, what, whatever armaments and and yeah and and uh, militia and and uh, what's the other term uh, ordinance we can throw, you know, it, its way to try to protect it. That's right. that's all the the outer shield of oblivion is is you know getting into the castle and then right. then the inner shield of oblivion would be like okay we made it so far into the castle and we realize okay i've stopped firing my blame thrower now i can now i can um you know concentrate on what's inside the castle inside my mind and see that well maybe maybe there's someplace i haven't looked and high up in the castle castle keep behind a, a locked in a locked vault behind multiple doors kind of like the get smart sequence you ever saw that show with all the right, doors right. <laughs> finally you get to the, the the most innermost sanctum sanctorum in the castle keep and and there's ken's blue dot and and <laughs> <laughs> slowly sliding off the <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and 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 the, on the blue dot it says the problem wasn't outside the castle the problem was right. inside the castle the problem was the belief in the castle you know the, <laughs> right you know, the, the belief right. in the ego yeah yeah right yeah that's yeah good. that that's so helpful isn't it? And, and uh another course call i mentioned mentioned that a year or so ago and i thought yeah that's really it because we're so, i mean we spend so much time with the outer shield of oblivion you know it seemed like for myself i probably 95 plus 99 percent of the time most time just forgetting that you know the world isn't doing anything to me right yeah right. and less right. than five kind of stuff right and i'm never upset the reason i think i oh yeah that's right it's not out there and so then it's like okay well now where does all the guilt go ah back back inside right and right. now they got got to apply 34 and say well i could see peace instead of seeing the guilt um and i need and i need holy spirit's help to look at both of those seeming sides of things but right, then right and the third step is like oh if i've revealed that it's not outside and i've released the guilt from the inside as well then the replacement's automatic and that's why there's right. nothing that needs to be done i don't have to work at it yeah right. yeah I, I really like the way you, you phrase that you know about, about not needing to work because it <laughs> <laughs> right i i can roll me to that i, I, I know I now that you're retired down. in arizona yeah. it's like yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah well i'm almost retired but, but close enough i guess right right yeah. yeah well the thing that really the thing to work on would be to identify yeah you know you can be retired but i think we still the one task i think is to be a detective still yeah yeah to identify the ego you know and look at it that's really that's really the, the task and then that's but that's it we we give it over to the um executive branch you know they we're we're, we're, the, we're the detective we say you did this is a criminal behavior and we move it over to the to the judge we we don't have anything to do with the da or with the uh with the proceedings you know with what happens to the ego we're just basically identifying it. We don't have to change it. We don't have to restore it to society. You know, we just basically identify it. You so know, we're like Inspector Clouseau? Does that Clouseau. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, the, the pink panther. <laughs> we just have to bubble yeah. around and right. yeah. Yeah. it doesn't work, doesn't work on Zoom with to, to synchronize our singing, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's fun to try. Yeah. 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 I like the detective too. That's that's a great metaphor. I'll have to get one of those detective hats in there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Eye glasses. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Because they don't, we don't, you know, we don't judge. There's no judgment. You basically just say, and it's this is true in, in real life. You know, you catch somebody in the act of robbing a bank, you put the uh, handcuffs on, 
there's no judgment. It's like, I'm not going to put you to prison. I'm just basically, I'm catching you and I'm giving you to the authorities and they do whatever the law says needs to be done. It's not my decision, you know, and it's not my decision to judge the ego. I just basically say, okay, I just manipulated that person to be nice to me. You know, Jesus helped me look at that. And then the rest is no longer our jurisdiction. It's it's out of our hands. You know, it's not, we don't have to linger on it or try to change it or um, try to maybe even make up for it. I had this, this thing the other day, and I can't remember what it was, where I thought I should... Um, I should make up for it and write somebody, a, a client or something. I forgot to do something and I, I thought I should write this client in a text immediately and say, oh, you know, I did this wrong and blah, 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 whatever. And I wanted to write it and then I stopped and realized um, the you should, I don't know what the quote is. You shouldn't cry to say you're, you're innocent by yourself. You shouldn't, that's not your job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what it is, but I basically, it's basically, you don't have to be clean before you go into the shower. You go into the shower to be clean. So right, right, right. You, you wait, don't apologize or, or say, I'm sorry before you check back with Jesus to tell you you're innocent. Yeah. You have yeah. done nothing wrong. And then you write the apology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But don't write the apology to get out of the guilt. To make up for the guilt. Because if you make up for the guilt, the guilt is real. Yeah. Right? The ego is real. The ego says, yeah, come on, make up for it. You know, <laughs> Write a nice letter that says, I'm so sorry. So you can do that, but he, you know, to do it first, check with Jesus, make sure you get at least one instant that you know you're innocent. Mm -hmm. Whatever you write doesn't matter. You're innocent. Whatever you just did, and then you can write it. You know, then you write the text or write the sorry note or whatever it was. So you don't do it yourself. You don't try to get out of guilt you on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's always a. Uh, I think that's that's really helpful. Yeah, really helpful because it it's sort of like it remind me it's like we, we have to deal with the content before we deal with the form. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And the other thing that I think that applies in addition to you know misgivings about our own um, you know mental choices really, which sometimes and often do re reflect in behavior. I was thinking anger would be another great category for that uh, practice as well because you know sometimes if you if you're about to email, text, write communicate what however whatever carry pigeon whatever people are using these days <laughs> you know if if it's if it's done hastily in anger it usually you know the, you'll count to 10 uh practices is right. a good one or, or ten thousand as the neat case may be yeah right yeah but just do do that in a reflection first and just say right is this, is this really you know is this true you know kind of some of the byron katie stuff right. yeah, yeah. Let, let the ego the ego always speaks first yeah so you let the ego do its thing, you know, you write the letter and then you don't send it. You send it maybe the next day and realize, okay, I could take out the swords and the nuclear weapons and exchange it with strawberries. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And oftentimes that will reflect in terms of editing the email or, or text before you send right, exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, then it's like, oh, that, that felt much better. Thank you for right. waiting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. I know. Yeah, that's really helpful. <laughs> yeah. So we have fourteen hours to go. Bruce. Fourteen. Oh, fourteen hours. Oh gosh. Well, let's see. What uh, we could we could start going through the the book uh, chapter by chapter. <laughs> let's read the let's read the course. <laughs> Once upon a time, I do, I do a lot of that, but it's it's all, I I think it's fun to read the course together because I find that. Um, the humor in the course is more evident when you read it aloud sometimes. If I'm reading it by myself, right. it's like, oh, you know. Right. Kind of like the dark hooded figures uh, singing the dirge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Singing self, the self chorus of death. Yeah. Right, right. And, and I, I don't see the humor in it but as much as when I'm reading it in a, in a, 
you know, with another person or in a group. Yeah. I, I went through um, a few years ago and made little smiley faces in the margins of one of the copies of the text and uh, well, but, I mean, the whole book actually. And and when I had enough smileys, I thought I, I need to uh, um, put together a little program on the, the, the humor in the course and how many places Holy Spirit oh, lampoons funny. the ego. And, right. But not, not in any kind of mean spirited way. It's just like, if, again, it's that back to that looking again, isn't it? I mean, if we can just look and see how absurd everyone's right. ego is, um, which is really right. saying how absurd my ego is. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. There's no one out there. Small detail. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but then you know, it's it's really outrageously funny when we look at it from the Holy Spirit's perspective that we're needlessly right. suffering, and, that, and that's the only part that's kind of sad if there is such a thing in the course. Is that the tragic? The yeah, tragedy. we're just we're needlessly delaying and and uh, right. you know, the, the needlessly resisting the peace that's potential. And, but all in good time. Yeah. No, no harm. You know, what's a thousand done. years between friends, right? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or tens of thousands, you know, like it says in, uh, but they have come. Yeah. So what is a thousand years or tens of thousands, something like that. So you were involved in the, uh, what were you involved in with the foundation? Oh, a few years back. Um, they wanted someone to revise their their website, so I, I helped with that a bit. And I also work with uh, uh, one of uh, your fellow fellow compatriots from Germany, um, Felix Alcala, who who did the the uh, right, right, right. the, the yeah. web edition and did a beautiful job with that. And I use that all the time, and I'm, I know a lot of other people do. That and, that web edition is gold. Oh, isn't it? That's it's just gold. such such a such a gem. Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, it's, I I find it's really helpful to if you if you have a kind of a thread of thought and and a topic that comes to mind, it's just like oh, type it in the oh, search. Oh yeah, exactly. And there it comes. I mean, I mean, right. I still have a copy of the, the the big red concordance over on the shelf there. Uh, if if uh, <laughs> the power this was from that was from the Cold War, Bruce. Yeah, I, I know. Would come over and you would fend off bullets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no longer necessary. Well, maybe it's necessary again, but it whatever. It makes a good doorstop too. But, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm reminded of the story about Judy Sketch Whitson. Uh, getting was uh, people were accusing uh, her of, of taking the you know the course too seriously and and uh, you know making an idol out of it. And and in one of the stories she she told on um, the, pod, the podcast, either the podcast or or the uh, webinars they've been doing right, within the last couple of years. She said, "Yeah, I, I was addressing this this group, and and uh, uh, I guess her daughter Tam Morgan, who was saying, aren't you taking the course a little too seriously?'" And so she she went up to the podium, and she was you know a fairly fairly short woman, and didn't have enough height to reach the microphone. So she oh. took took the course and stood on it. <laughs> Some of the people, the end of that. people are aghast. Oh no, you have this sacred right. object. Like, no, there's nothing holy in the world. There's there's nothing sacred in form. It's it's, it's the ideas behind them. As our beloved friend Plato would have right. said, right? Yeah, right. yeah. We had this. Uh, there was a funny thing because in and in, in um, Roscoe because the the center was right on the Tanana Lake. Yeah, and Ken would joke and said if if people would really know what the course says there would be hundreds and hundreds of copies of deteriorating copies at the bottom of the lake <laughs> you know because they would just say <laughs> got it and he done also, he also said if you don't get to the point where you want to do that where you want to burn the course in front of all your friends and swear never to look at it you are not doing it right <laughs> you're not there yet. You're not at the point where your ego is so afraid of it mm -hmm. that you actually want to burn it or want to get get rid of it. So we all have to come to that point eventually. The fifth stage you know? and the de development of fear and loathing uh, if for the yeah, ideas yeah. in the course. Four point five, four point four dash five. I think that's the the stage. Okay. Or five dash five. I don't. I can't remember. I think it's five dash five because four is the one where you, where you're relatively peaceful. Right, right. That's and five the... is the one where, it, where the, you know what hits the fan. Dark night of the, 
Dark tea time of the soul, as Douglas Adams would say. The dark tea <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah. Just think 42 whenever you're in trouble. Exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. And get your towel ready and you're good. I forgot about the towel. Yes. The yes. Towel. Yeah. My God. Yeah. When I was in my 20s, we did, we tried to recreate a lot of the things that you could do with a towel because we were so into Douglas Adams. Yeah. And we were like, oh my God, he's so right. Because you could use the towel for so many things like, you know, a sling or to sleep on it or as a blanket or as a neck warmer or neck cooler. Or, I mean, there's so many, so many things you can use. It's it versatile, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's brilliant. It's so brilliant. I, I'm reflecting on another one of his his books where I think it was after the, the trilogy of four books, perhaps, but uh, maybe not, but uh, um, where he talked about the the planet where um, the extraterrestrials were hovering above this planet for millennia, but they they weren't, the, no one suspected on that lived on the planet that they were there because no one even considered the idea of looking up. So yeah, I right. thought that was clever, you know, but that's, that's kind of like what we're, you know, it is the same. If, if you think about Ken's chart, you know, we've got, we, right. we never, we never think to look up into the mind. Right. It's like, what? Right. What what's this mind stuff? Go away, go away. Tell me about something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, re re seriously, if somebody on CNN would say, "Hey, reports came out that if you're upset about your neighbor, you're really projecting your own guilt." I mean, who would? Who would? It's film so at eleven. Hard. Film at eleven. Huh? <laughs> right? Yeah. You you, you wouldn't. <laughs> You would say, what the hell are they, you know, the whole country would be in, or if Biden would say that, you know, yeah. if you don't feel the peace, it's your fault. <laughs> you know, it's your responsibility. I mean, the, 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 the economy would crash, you know, the whole system would break down. It's so outrageous. The house of cards that never was would fear. collapse. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. One one more Douglas Adams reference, and they, they did a they did a pretty good uh, job in the the movie version of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Have you seen the movie? No, they, it, toward the end of it, they they show when when Earth is demolished for an interstellar bypass, and they're oh, re yeah, 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 they're the rebuilding bypass, right. a new Earth. Yeah, um, they have some really good visuals of this 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 elaborate structure that's you know that the Earth is being built on. It's like this giant, you know. Um, uh, high rise I, I beams and whatnot and, and and but just it goes on for thousands of miles you know and right and and uh i think it's bill nye who has a cameo on that part where you see it's showing um arthur dent you know the, the new earth kind of right, thing. right right but but it was kind of like well it's all fabricated it's it's all it's all just made up you know but we don't think of it that way we forget that this is like a you know a, a holographic dream of titanic proportions you know and we're rearranging holodeck chairs all the time right right, right. <laughs> yeah but i think that this is a really good point um but i think we sh the the reason is really important you know yeah, that we're not just doing it you know i always feel like we we didn't just spill ketchup on our shirt we think we killed god right you know it's not um it's not nothing. I mean, it is nothing in the grand scheme of things, mm -hmm. right? But whatever, however crazy we are in our ego, we have a legitimate, 100% solid reason to do it. Mm -hmm. The moment we believe in sin, mm -hmm. that's, that's it. You can't do anything other than that. You have to try as, you know, in, in crazy ways to project out your guilt in, onto everyone, everything, Whatever we do, we kill people, we manipulate people, we, you know, trash people, we judge people because we think we killed God. You know, I think yeah. that disconnect is easy to make to say, you know, we're, we're, we're just in this illusion, but it's, there's a, a huge reason, you know, I mean, a, a colossal reason that we think we're so guilty. And the Course says that, um, the the guilt is so acute, it has to be projected. It's not a choice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the choice, I, I think, I came to the conclusion 
that when you're on the ladder, when you have Ken's chart and you you have the you know decision maker going down the ladder into the world, mm -hmm. into the body, mm -hmm. we there's no choice down there. Mm. There's no choice because the choice is in the mind where the you know the, where the the vacant spot of the blue dot, right? The blue dot goes down the stairs, sin, guilt, projection, fear, making of the world, identification with the world. And when we're identified with the body, we can't, there's no choice at that level, mm -hmm. right? We can't just say, oh, I'm getting out of the ego. The ego says, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. What it's, are you talking about? You, you can't get out. It's foolproof, but up. not Godproof, right? right? It's foolproof, right. Yeah. And so we have to get back up. You know, we have to go up the ladder mm -hmm. and eventually we'll get to the point where we can actually make a choice for the Holy Spirit um, that's why that line, um, if you, you what, saying those words is nothing and meaning those words is everything. I want the peace of God because when we're in the world, in the body, we can say, I want out of the ego. Nothing happens. We're not really getting out of the ego. You know, I, I say, I want to, I want to be less conflicted. I want to have more peace. There's no change. <laughs> Nothing changes, right? Once in a while, mm -hmm. you get a glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. But in general, when you're in a in a in a horrible relationship, and you say, "I want you to be different," no, you don't. <laughs> we don't want the you know we don't want the other person to really be different. We Where don't would have my scapegoat choice. go? Right? I know, right? So, <laughs> but but there is no choice in that. Yeah, yeah. The the choice the course talks about is way up. You know, so we have to go back. We have that's why he says, you know, look at the guilt with me, and that way you're going back up the ladder, and then you can really decide for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit of a, I think in general, with us first students, we have this tendency of making it seem a little easier than it is. Sure. You know what I mean? All of us. Certainly. I mean, I for Certainly. me, I I, oh, yeah. I recognize that in myself. Recovering right? bliss, like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. The recovering was in here. <laughs> but it is, but it it, it is we, we, we think we killed God. Right. You know, it's like non-trivial, just... non-trivial offense, basically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we, we have serious reasons for mm -hmm. projecting because yeah. the pain yeah. is too unbearable, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um but then there are the the other voices that say, well, if you if you spend too much time on the ego, you're making it real. You know, we know when we're doing just, that, though, right? I mean, yeah, we're somewhat. doing it anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then that's why Ken, I think, always says, that as long as you're in the in in the morning, looking in the mirror, and you see yourself in it, <laughs> you're still in your ego, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Richard, Richard, like, okay, this is a good, this is a solid like baseline. Yeah, yeah. Would you just remind me of Richard Bach in his wonderful little book, Illusions, had that Messiah's handbook. And and one of them right. was, uh, the little quotes was, here's a test to see if your mission on earth is finished. If you're alive, it isn't. <laughs> I just figure, I apply that to our forgiveness <laughs> classroom. I, I figure as, as long as I think there's a Bruce uh, exactly. and a right. world, I, I've got forgiveness work to I've do. I've got work to do, right? Yeah, yeah. Or well, wasn't that also the book when he flies around and the, because of, of the Messiah flying in his airplane, there would be no bugs on the windshield. He just wave his hand, and they right, so as long as you away. have still yeah. bugs on your windshield, right. you're not you're not done. <laughs> exactly. You know, you drive in a car and you have bugs on your windshield. Uh, sorry, yeah. yeah, you're still in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then it's probably funny. made the intermediate phases. There's still bugs in the windshield, but you're not as upset as you used to be about them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not as yeah. They, they don't and ruin then you your just, whole day. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. No. Maybe just, and then maybe if just you don't, you don't, you don't ride on your motorcycle with your mouth open either. You know, <laughs> you you learn to close it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good. Good times. Yes. Yes. Well, do she go another fourteen or or? Uh... 14 hours, 14 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I, I'm enjoying this. I think we should do more of these. Certainly. Yeah, we can. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anything else 
come to mind at the moment? Or? Um, let me see. I found this uh, this morning. Um, I was just going through um, the gift of God. Oh, perfect, perfect. And there are some of some of her poems are really dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think I was wondering if I could. Re There's one. Oh, my lights. I mean, this is so dark. We we should close with that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, I think if we can we can smile on either side of it. Okay, all right. Okay, let's do that, that. that should work, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that Holy Spirit is laughing at the darkness, exactly. right? So, so we just need exactly. to, to, without skipping over steps, without trying to jump to the top of the ladder, just keep looking, right? Right. right? Actually, this poem is called "The Second Chance," and it has the darkness in the first paragraph, and then the light in the second. And it's really, it's really beautiful. Isn't that so much of the course, though? I mean, if you think, especially the text, yes. you know, you you read a section in, in the text, and it's like, oh, my God. you know, I mean, it's like ninety three. It starts out, <laughs> light and peace and joy abide in me. Right, and, right. And the first sentence, and then you're like, you think you're the home of evil, darkness, and sin. What? <laughs> that that seems like you've shifted gears pretty fast there, right? Yeah. Right. But then, but then it almost ine inevitably, toward the end of each section. It's sort of the, you know the light at the end of the tunnel appears and right. and and even right. if it isn't in full splendor it's like oh yeah this this really is the dream that i made up and i need to take responsibility for and look at it release my investment in it seeing where i have been invested in it and then it can 10 years later you can feel a little better yeah maybe even less at times but you know but nine let's go for nine you know. you know nine years nine's a good number yeah anyway please proceed all right okay <laughs> okay so the second chance i have betrayed my god in many ways throughout the bitter nights and secret days my hate drove deep into my mind and tore away the little love i had in store i watched it go without regret for i did not perceive how much I lost thereby. With hatred as a friend, I did not fear to lose it for a God I held more dear. For now I seemed secure by hate, hate held fast and feeling I was safe from love at last. So that's the, perf that's the first paragraph. Second paragraph. The eyes of Christ looked steadily on me as if my secret hate he did not see. I hugged it tight and hid it in my heart and still I held it from his love apart until one day my eyes met his and then my fingers opened and my heart. And when I looked away, a star was in my hand, another in my heart. I listened and his voice said silently to me, now go and hate no more. And I said, be it so. Lovely. Beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Really is. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason in that first part, um, the uh, the part where we think we've dealt with the problem, I don't know, just what flashed in my mind is the the old Wiley e. Coyote Roadrunner cartoons, if you've ever seen those. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, Wiley e. Coyote thinks he's planted this, he orders this explosives from Acme Company, and right, he's going right, right. to dynamite the Roadrunner. And he's like, okay, now, I'm, now I've got this solved, and I can walk away from this and, and come back and have a uh, Roadrunner feast or whatever. But it always backfires, you know, it's like the, right. the, the ideas don't leave their source. Right. The, the explosives right. never leave Wiley e. Coyote's mind. Right. And... <laughs> That's a brilliant, brilliant uh, analogy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. But uh, well, we all keep trying it, you know. We we keep thinking if I keep projecting in just the right way, maybe I can find a combination that will right. Right. absolve me from right. this unconscious guilt. That's unfounded, but I, I haven't seen right. that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And but you know, the blessing is there. You know, this the silver lining after we look, like you say. Right. right. Yeah. And that's I think that's that question to ask Jesus. You know, if we have any kind of problem. And we we take the problem back to the cause, which is the belief in sin, right? 
and with when we look at that and say, okay, if the problem is not the outside, if the problem is my belief in sin, then I can go to Jesus and ask him, am I really sinful? Mm -hmm. Is it really true that I have sinned? Right? And let the question stand and let Jesus answer, maybe not the same day, but that question is what the ego wants to blot out. You know, that question, am I really sinful? Because its, it's foundation is based on us accepting this belief that we are. Right. So if we bring everything back that we have issues with the neighbor upstairs or health or money or whatever, bring it back to the belief in sin and then ask Jesus, is this really true? You know, can this be true that I'm actually sinful? And the answer must be no. Right. The, Jesus' answer is always be no. And however, we get that answer, you know, in our own framework. But I think that question is really important. Is are am I really sinful? You know, bring everything back to that one question. That's kind of the the simplified uh, process. You know, we have a problem in the world. We bring it back to our sin and then ask Jesus the question: Are we really sinful? Because if the sin is gone, the problem is gone. No foundation the left. Yeah, the foundation is gone. Yeah, yeah. So I find that helpful to oh, just yeah. ask is can it be, you know, can it be that I'm sinful? That's a great yeah. rhetorical question, isn't yeah. it? Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it all distills down to that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's like yeah. can, really can it be? Can it be? And that's why all those beautiful passages really say no. You cannot be sinful. Mm -hmm. All the the whole course, right? Mm -hmm. says that in one way or another and and it's the contrast it's bringing the the, right. the the sinful ideas out of the closet juxtaposing them right next to the holy spirit's rebuttal and saying you know when you put them side by side ego's hmm. propaganda just doesn't cut it, just it. doesn't hold up doesn't yep. hold up yeah, exactly right. yeah right yeah it seems like it's that reluctance to drag every last thing out of the I closet i know yeah yeah i know but we will sooner or later. Yeah. We'll, we'll want to. We'll, we'll be motivated, right? Yeah, we can get some ice cream in the meantime. <laughs> some cheesecake. I think there's a know. little left in the freezer. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was, that was a fun, uh, wow, hour and 20 minutes. That goes oh, so wow. fast. It does. Oh, oh my God. gosh. Yes, I guess so. Yeah. Well, um, look forward to the next conversation. I know, me too. And th thank you so much, Stefan. And uh, um, I'll, I'll put all the links to your wonderful YouTube videos and books and anything else you think of, shoot, shoot my way. And uh, um, yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, I great appreciate fun. it. Thanks, great fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you.